American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. The music fades. Your local announcer's voice superimposes itself over the theme music, just as my voice did when I started speaking. Your opening announcement would sound like this. Tonight, the Blank Company presents another of the exciting adventures in the life of Bulldog Drummond. Amateur detective, soldier of fortune, champion of lost causes, the most celebrated adventure detective of fiction and the screen, who now comes to his loyal friends through radio with more of his baffling and intriguing mysteries. We invite you to follow in the footsteps of Bulldog Drummond. We invite you, too, to try blank. At this point, your announcer will describe your product, store, or service, followed by 40 words of selling copy. Now to tell you about tonight's adventure, here is Bulldog Drummond. Come with me to one of the great highways which spread like ribbons across the broad expanse of the United States. It is late at night, and a driving storm beats down on the countryside. Coming up toward the crest of a steep hill, a huge express truck laden with goods slowly climbs. In the driver's cab, two men peer intently into the night. Hey, Bill. You hear it? What time is it? Uh, 3.30. Say, did you see that? Yeah. By the truck behind us, signaling with their lights. I wonder if it's anyone we know. I'll give them my signal. Two long flashes and one short one. Here comes their reply. Long, two shorts, and the long. That's funny. I never got that signal on the road before. I guess it must be some new outfit. Yeah. Boy, I'm sure glad we ain't alone on this road. What do you mean? The Richards mob. <laughs> you ain't worried about them, are you? Well, they got away with six hijackings in the last two weeks. Two of them were on this road. Yeah, but they wouldn't pull another job so quickly. They're not so dumb. They know the cops are looking for them. Yeah, well, I hope you're right. Hey, that truck's coming close. Only it ain't a truck, Red. I can see it clearly now. It's a car. Yeah, here they come. Okay, you and the cab. Pull over and stop. Say, Red, they got guns and rifles. Yeah, four men in that car. Better do as they say, Bill. Come on, stop or we'll let you have it. I mean business, Bill. Business or not, I ain't stopping. Fire at us. You better duck. Hey, the road's wet. Be careful of skidding. I know what I'm doing. I hope so. Are you going to pull over? This is your last chance. Bill, you better stop. No, I can manage her. Now you better with skidding. Hold tight. I'll bring her out of it. Just take it. Bill, you're heading for the back. Get her on the center of the road. I can't. She's out of control. Watch it, Red. We're going to crash. Red. Red, you okay? Yeah. You were crazy to try a thing like that. I wanted to get away from her. Not a lot of good at it, did you? Here they come. All right, get out of that cab, both of you. Guess the jig's up, Bell. Not yet, it ain't. There'll be other trucks along this road and cars, too. I'm going to stall them. Come on out, or we'll drag you out. Come on, Red. You must be Richards. Never mind who I am. Okay, boys, you two cover them. I'll take over the truck. Oh, no, you don't. Hey, you look like the kind that's going around looking for trouble. Yeah, you got me right, buddy. Uh, hey, he dropped his gun. Grab it, Red. Grab it. Why didn't you help us? Dr. Wilson wanted in Ward 8. Calling Dr. Wilson. Captain Drummond? Denny? Oh, I got your message, Captain Drummond, and here I am. But would you mind telling me what this is all about? Well, Denny, I've asked you to meet me at this hospital because we've got one of the most important commissions we've ever been assigned to since we landed in the United States. Oh, I say, what's up? It seems there's a gang of hijackers stealing truckloads of goods consigned for shipment to England. Hijackers? Yes, Denny, it's an American word for a sort of rude pirate. Oh, I understand. Or oh, when did you receive this commission? Well, we must work as quickly as possible. You know how badly they need those American goods back home. Oh, yes, of course. 
just how do these modern descendants of Captain Kidd operate? Instead of ships, they use automobiles, Denny. Instead of cutlasses, they use sawed-off shotguns and submachine guns. Otherwise, the methods are exactly the same. Terrorize or even kill the drivers and make off with their trucks. They're a particularly nasty lot, Denny. As I can well imagine, Captain. One of their victims, a man named Cassidy, is in that room. He was courageous enough to resist them. They beat him, shot him. If a doctor will permit it, we'll have a chat with him. Ah, there's Dr. Wilson now. May come in, Captain Drummond. Come, Denny. I don't think you'll be able to have much of a talk with him, Captain Drummond. He's been delirious for the last two days. Mm -hmm. Talks coherently for only short periods. I understand, Doctor. Red, why don't you help me? Grab his gun, Red. Help me, Red. Cassidy. Red. Red. Cassidy. Uh, Who? Who are you? I'm Captain Hugh Drummond. I'm investigating the hijacking. Hijacking? Oh, yeah, the fight. Did they get the truck? Did they get my load? Huh? Yes, Cassidy, yes. Now, look, do you feel well enough to answer some questions? Yeah, I guess so. Good. Now, can you tell me exactly what happened when you were held up three days ago? Yeah, well, Brett and me crashed into the embankment. Then they came up in their car. How many men did they have in the car? Four, I think. Did you recognize any of the men who attacked you? No. I guess I was kind of crazy of me to wail into them like I did. But it was dark, and I figured they wouldn't be able to shoot straight anyway. I, I thought I could stall them until another car came along the road, but I guess it didn't work. You know, Red didn't help me much. Oh? In fact, he, he just stood there. Say, Captain Drummond. Yes? Now I come to think of it the way them lights were signaled. Yes? A, a, a long... In two shorts and then a long. And then the way red. Oh, my head. Yes, Cassidy, go on with what you were saying. <laughs> and light signals. Red. Yes, Cassidy. What about red? Red. Why don't you help me? Grab his gun, red. Give me a hand here, will you? They're coming at me. Don't let him, red. Oh, Dr. Red. Wilson, Dr. Wilson. I'm afraid this will be all for the present, Captain Red. Trump. Yes, I understand, Doctor. Why don't you? Denny. Coming, yes. I say, Captain Drummond, who's this red person he's talking about? Oh, red Nelson, the driver who was with him when the truck was held up. And strangely enough, he wasn't injured in the fight at all. Oh, that's curious. Well, have you questioned this Nelson person yet? Yes, yeah, I had a little talk with him before coming here. He's scheduled to take a cargo of goods worth $30,000 to New York tonight. Hmm. He doesn't know it yet, but I'm going to be on that truck with him, Denny. Hey, Michaels. Come on, I'm ready to leave. Hey, Michaels, what's keeping you? Well, it's about... Oh, Captain Drummond. Yes. Hello, Nelson. What are you doing here? I've decided to take Michael's place. Why? You're carrying a valuable cargo, you know. You haven't any objection to my coming along, have you? Well, it's hard work. I need someone to relieve me. Oh, that's all right. I can try. Can you? Oh, I've handled trucks like this before. Well, what do you say? Ready to leave? Okay, Drummond. <laughs> When do you want me to take over? I'll tell you when, Drummond. Oh, you've been at the wheel for five hours now. I should think you're rather tired. No, I ain't tired. Say, what's that? What? Those lights in your mirror. Signals. Signal from whom? Another truck in back of us. You can see it in the mirror. I can see a pair of lights. It looks more like a car from here. Oh, no, cars don't signal like that. It's another truck. Look, they're, they're flashing their lights again. Yeah. Well, what does that signal mean? He's asking if everything's okay. Right. Are you going to reply? Yeah. 
I'm going to tell them everything's fine. Like this. Two long flashes and a short one. Interesting. I suppose they respond. Sure. Here it comes. Long one, two short ones. And what does that mean? It means this. What, a, a pistol? Yeah, get him up, Drummond. Come on, get him up. All right, Nelson. What are you going to do? You're not going to leave this cab alive, Drummond. I'm afraid you won't either. What do you mean? Look, your truck's going off the road. Where? Hey, let go of my hand. Oh, drop oh, gun. Drop that gun. Oh, you ain't going to... Stop it, I tell you. No. Get oh, away, get away. 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 Fight to the finish in a truck running wild down the highway. Can Drummond save the precious cargo? What is the secret of the blinking highlights? In just a few moments, we'll know the answer to this secret. The music fades, and at this point in the program each week, your local announcer presents a minute and a half of your selling copy. However, as is customary on the premier performance of network shows, Let's listen to the following suggested personal message to be read on the opening program by your local announcer or a chief executive of your company. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight is a great one in the career of the blank company. For tonight, we present for the first time the most celebrated adventure detective of fiction and the screen, Bulldog Drummond, who will now be brought to you, our good friends and his loyal friends, through radio. We have developed this program for your entertainment, to make your Sundays more pleasant, and to circle a weekly date on your calendar to get together with the Blank Company. The adventures of Bulldog Drummond come to you directly from the stage of the Mutual Playhouse, just off Times Square in New York City, where every Sunday, for your entertainment, we will assemble a sparkling cast of dramatic stars from radio, Hollywood, and the theater to bring you the very best the most brilliant in mystery adventure stories, just as we of the Blank Company always bring you the best in blank products. Be sure to tune in every Sunday when Bulldog Drummond will thrill you again with another complete, pulse-pounding story in his career of breathtaking adventure. Such is the program that we have arranged especially for you, and we of the Blank Company sincerely hope that Bulldog Drummond brings you as much pleasure each week as it gives us in presenting him to you. And now, on with the show. We left Drummond struggling with Red Nelson in the cab of the huge trailer truck, which is swinging crazily down the highway as the two men grapple. Drummond is relentlessly twisting Nelson's gun hand. Drop that gun. Uh, you ain't gonna get away from me. Oh. Oh. Uh, I'm gonna stop this truck. Uh, oh, there we are. Uh, all right, Nelson, step out of it. Come uh, on, come uh, on. You've got your pistol now, so you better not try anything. How are you gonna do with me? You better talk fast, Nelson. If you're smart and tell me what I want to know, it'll take years off your sentence. What do you want to know? Those light signals we saw. They came from Richard's car, didn't they? Yeah. Did he plan to hijack this truck? Yeah. What was the signal you gave him? Was it the signal to stay away? You ain't got a thing on me, Captain Drummond. You ain't going to get any information out of me. Understand it, Captain Drummond. Oh, what, Denny? Why that Nelson person is so foolish as to withhold the information? Oh, it's quite simple. He thinks Richards will help him. As soon as we got back here, he saw a lawyer, and we haven't been able to get a word out of him since. Uh, it's rather discouraging, isn't it, Captain Drummond? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, rather. I thought Nelson's capture would give us an important lead, but it's just another blind alley. We're back just where we started from, and it is. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Captain Drummond? Denny, Denny, have you seen the seat of your trousers? The seat of my trousers? You must have sat in some paint. Oh, dear me, so I have. 
Looks quite ghastly, doesn't it? Well, uh, that rich yellow doesn't exactly harmonize with your blue suit. Oh, I must rush home and change. No, 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 don't. But, Captain Drummond, it's most embarrassing. Embarrassing? Why, Denny, those trousers have just given me a plan that will lead to the capture of the Richards mob. Have they? I don't see how a pair of trousers can capture a gang of hijackers. You will, Denny, you will. Well, do you mind telling me what your plan is, Captain Drummond? Of course not. In every one of these hijackings, the truck was taken from the drivers on the highway. Yes, that seems to be the general method. Yes. Two days later, the truck would be found empty, miles away from the spot where it was held up. The hijackers had unloaded the goods, and unless I'm greatly mistaken, stored them somewhere. Oh, can you be sure of that? Well, I'm not absolutely sure. You see, the police in New York and Chicago have received very little of the stolen property. These hijackers are clever. They know that it's rather easy for the police to trace large quantities of stolen property. Oh, yes, I see. And so they're selling only small amounts of it. In that way, they protect themselves. Very clever. Yes, but here's the rub. They must have some place where they can unload and store the stuff. And that's the place we're going to find. But how? With a clever paint trail which we'll find in the crime laboratory here at police headquarters. Come on, Denny. We have a lot of work to do. Here, Denny, try this new mixture. Very well, Captain Drummond. Paint, paint, paint. For my word, Captain Drummond, I'm fairly sick of the smell of the stuff. Ah, now, now, Denny. We're getting close to the mixture we need. Don't lose patience now. Captain Drummond. Yes, do you realize that we've spent the entire night in this laboratory? Have we? Yeah. Oh, wait, Denny. Come here. What is it? Look, this mixture. 104. When did you set it out to dry? Oh, I look at the chart. 104. Here it is. It was set out at 5.10 a.m. 5.10. And what was its original color? Dark blue. Well, look, Denny, it's turned a cream color. Yes. I think this is the mixture we need. What time is it now? 540. Are you sure it didn't change color before this? Oh, I'm positive. Here's the chart, Captain Drummond. Mixture 104, dark blue paint, set to dry at 5.10 a.m. 5.15 a.m., same color. 5.30, still blue. 5.35, starting to turn to cream color. This is what we need to really track down the stolen trucks. Turn on the lights, Denny. I want to make one more test. Right, Joe. Where's that spotlight? Ah, here it is. Now, Denny, you watch while I turn on the spotlight. There we are. See, Denny? We can see that mixture 104 without any trouble. That cream shade looks white under the spotlight. Yes. All right, Denny. Today is the 21st. I'm going to call the Trans State Transport Company and tell them to spread the word that a valuable truckload of goods will be sent to New York on the night of the 23rd. And, Denny... I think that date will mark the end of the Richards outfit. Hey, look, Jerry, I think that's the Trans State truck coming up the hill. Uh, yeah, you better get set. I want you to swing out into the road as soon as it passes us. Okay. You fellas ready back there? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now we're in luck. I can't see another pair of lights on this road, and we can see for miles from the top of this hill. Yeah. Say, boss. Yeah? Are you sure this load is worth the risk? Sure. Hey, listen, I got a gilded edge tip that the load coming through tonight is worth close to 100 grand. Yeah, but what I'm worried about is that it might be a trap. Say, what's eating you? Getting cold feet? No, no, but you know what happened to Red Nelson... Without him slipping us the dope from the inside, we might be taking a big chance. Hey, listen... I checked this road for 20 miles in both directions. There ain't a trace of a cop around here. Stop your worrying, Jerry. This looks like it'll be the easiest load we ever grabbed. Oh, I hope you're right. Here it comes, Jerry. Yep, this is our baby. It's the Trans State, all right. All right, Jerry, turn on the lights and get started. <laughs> Jerry, pull over close to the cab. Right. You pull us in the back. He's ready to those Tommy guns. Okay, Jerry. Blast your horn. Right. Hey, you're in the truck. Pull over. Stop or we'll let you have it. Come on, pull over. Yeah, that did it, Richards. Hey, stop and pull up in front of him. All right. Come on, man. Right behind. Hey, you 
you. Get out of that cab. That's right. Now make it quick. Come on. Keep your hands up. Okay. We're getting out. Come on, Danny. All right. Now, we won't shoot you if you don't give us any trouble. Jerry, you get in the truck. All right. I'll follow you in the stick-up car. They go, Danny. Yes, it worked like a charm, Captain Drummond. I don't think they were in the least suspicious. Oh, I hope not. And the way you said okay, sir, it sounded so authentically American. <laughs> Danny, look at the road here. Our paint mixture, 104. Yes, it's dark blue. And the trailing gangster car with Richard in it will never spot it. But in 30 minutes, it'll turn cream colored. And we'll be able to follow that truck to wherever they're taking it. I wonder what they'd do if they knew they were leaving a trail behind them leading straight to their hideout. Well, Danny, in half an hour, Sergeant Johnson of the state police will be along. And we'll be able to follow that trail. Sergeant Johnson, I think we're reaching the end of the trail. Better slow down. All right, sir. Look, Danny. A line of paint goes right up to the entrance of that warehouse. Yes. Stop here, Sergeant, please. Now, look, Sergeant. You'd better turn out the lights on this car and radio headquarters the location of this warehouse and tell them to send some men at once. All right, Captain Drummond. Come on, Denny. What are you going to do, Captain Drummond? Have a look at that warehouse. It seems to be dark and deserted. They probably have blinds over the windows. Look, Denny, you can see how the white line made by our paint mixture goes right through that garage entrance. Yes, it does. Look, there's a door over there. Quiet now as we approach. Right, Earl. It's open, Denny. Let me get your pistol ready. Maybe trouble. Right. Well, come on, come on. Look, sir. Huh? There's a light up there near the back. Yes, yes. Look, there's the truck we were in tonight. That's the twelve of the men. There doesn't seem to be a soul about. Yes, yes, that's curious. Denny, the door. Somebody close the door. Come on, back, quick. It's locked. It's locked. I'm afraid, Captain Drummond, we've walked into a trap. Yes, they must have seen us come in and slipped out through another entrance. Well, Captain Drummond, if we didn't succeed in getting the pirates, at least we succeeded in getting their booty. Yeah. Look at this place. Why, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of stolen goods here. Yeah. And... Denny. Yes? Do you smell smoke? Smoke. Yes, Captain Drummond. Well, look, look there in the back. A fire. Yes, Denny, those bounders are far cleverer than I gave them credit for. They knew that the game was up, and they set this place on fire to destroy the evidence before they fled. Captain Drummond, what was that? Denny, oh, this, look over there. Crate upon crate of chemicals. This place will be a roaring furnace in five minutes. We've got to get out of here. Try the door over there, Denny. Right, sir. <coughs> I say this is all smart. Try the window, Captain Drummond. Any <coughs> of these windows are barred, too. We can't get out through them. There goes another crate of chemicals. Captain Drummond, this fire is spreading as fast as lightning. All these doors seem to be locked. What are we going to do? <laughs> smashing climax of our mystery in just a moment. But first, a message from our sponsor. Again, your local announcer presents another minute and a half sales message. At this time, we ask you to try and visualize what the adventures of Bulldog Drummond means to you. Here are the facts. In the past, as a local or regional advertiser operating on a limited budget, you could not hope to compete with the big network radio programs for a listening audience. Talent costs alone making this impossible. Today, however, as a participant in our cooperative group, you pay only your prorated share of the total talent cost. This is possible because Bulldog Drummond is a nationally syndicated cooperative network radio program, which is simultaneously fed by direct wire from the Mutual Playhouse just off Times Square in New York City to the 175 affiliated stations of the Mutual Broadcasting System from coast to coast. This fall, starting Sunday, September 28th, you can exclusively sponsor an audience-tested radio program in your city 
which has proven itself the equal of the brilliant network shows sponsored by the world's largest advertisers. Bulldog Drummond is not a phonograph record, but a live show presenting top-name dramatic artists in person at a good Sunday hour when most people listen, and at a program cost prorated to the potentialities of your trading area. And remember that Bulldog Drummond's fiction fans and movie fans are pre-sold Drummond Radio fans. Now back to Bulldog Drummond. We left Drummond and Denny trapped in the blazing warehouse, surrounded by exploding chemical crates, choking from the dense fumes and facing an almost certain death. Licking tongues of flame bar all exit. Desperately, Denny cries. There goes another crate of chemicals. Captain Drummond, this fire is spreading as fast as lightning. Now the doors are locked. The windows barred. What are we going to do? Denny, Denny. Are you sure that this is the road they took? Yes, Captain Drummond. They had quite a start on us, Captain Drummond. Yes, I know, I know. Calling all cars, Richards and his mob spotted at Glenville. Police fired at their cars and knocked out one of their headlights. They turned around, went south on Route 14. Route 14? That's the road we're on now. Sergeant Johnson, how far is it to Glenville? Only three or four miles from here, Captain Drummond. Then we may meet them coming toward us, unless they've taken a side road. I say, Captain Drummond, look up there. Two cars just came over the crest of that hill. One of them has a headlight out. Yes, but we can't be sure it's Richards. I say, they seem to be signaling to each other with their headlights. Look, a long flash, two short ones, and another long one. Ah, that's Richards, all right. It's that all-clear signal. Johnson, swing your car around and block the road. Okay, Captain. Hurry, we won't be able to make it if you don't. Come on, Denny. Johnson, out of this car quickly now. Come over here to the side of the road. Here they come. Yes, that had to stop now. Get your pistols ready, men. We'll close in when they stop. We'll be able to hold them until help arrives. Captain Drummond, I don't think they're going to stop. They're trying to bring down the lights. Captain Drummond. Yes, Denny. I say, did you see this account of the capture of the Richards gang and the blade? Uh, no, no, Denny. Well, there's a very good photograph of you in it. Yeah. yeah. The one they have of me is simply horrid. Oh, wow. Well. Mm-hmm. Denny, I think you'd better say goodbye, or rather au revoir to our American friends. Well, what do you mean? Well, we're leaving on the clipper for England. I received a cable only an hour ago. I'm afraid we won't be able to come back here until the fall. Oh, dear me, I... It will be difficult to say farewell. I, I've i made so many good friends here. Uh, and so have I. But there's a great deal of work to be done in England, and we are needed. A 
Again, the music fades. Again, your local announcer presents a half-minute sales message. We suggest you have your selling copy at this point, feature specials, traffic items, price merchandise, or special promotions. Strong, do-it-today copy with plenty of sell. Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. In the great light of early morning, the young woman and the man stand at the finish line of the train track, their eyes intently following the racehorse as the jockey drifts it down the home stretch. The young woman holds the stopwatch tensely in her hands. The horse rushes past the finish line, and the young woman snaps the control lever on the watch. The jockey slows his mount down and brings it back to the finish line at a slow trot. Easy, boy. Easy. How do we do, Miss Peters? 147 and a half, Al. Nice riding, kid. Well, thanks, Mr. Kais. A mile to 16th and 147 and a half. That's not bad, eh, Miss Peters? Not bad. That's darn good, Al. That's White Star's best time to date. Well, Mr. Connors, what do you think of it now? Miss Peters, I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it myself. White Star was a complete washout last season as a two-year-old. You know his record. He didn't show him the money once. I really figured I'd pull this smart deal when I sold him to you. <laughs> Sorry for your bargain now, huh? Well, a bargain's a bargain. Anyway, this was just a trial run. I'll hold off crying into my beer until I see how he makes out in a money race. Well, you'll do plenty of crying, Mr. Connors. White Star's going to be a real champion this season. That's right. With Al Russo up, he's a sure winner. With anybody up, Miss Peters. This pony's got what it takes. Hey, I better get him back to the stable for a rub down. I'll see you later. All right, Al. Wow. Yeah, Mr. Connors? Hold it a minute, will you? I'm going back to the stable. I'll walk with you. Sure. Do you mind, Miss Peters? No, go right ahead. And don't forget, you're buying me champagne at the clubhouse if White Star wins tomorrow. Champagne it'll be. All right, Al. Let's go. Right. What are you trying to pull, Al? What do you mean, Nick? You know what I mean. You know just what I mean. You let this nag out all the way this morning on that track. You were riding him full. What was the idea? I just wanted to see what he could really do. Yeah? Why? Just curious. I told you to hold him back, didn't I? I got you the job with that Peters dame, so you do what I tell you. White Star wins when I say he wins, and not before. He comes in under the wire when the odds are where I want them. You understand that? Well, yeah, sure, Nick, just as you say, but... And, Nick, one thing bothers me. What? What did you have done to this hay burner? Last season, he didn't have no more chance in a snowball in the Sahara. You dumped him on Helen Peters because he was a flop. Now, all of a sudden, he runs like man of war. What's the angle, Nick? I'm paying you to ride White Star the way I say to ride him. Is that right, Al? Yeah, that's right. Okay. So you just do that. I'm not paying you to ask questions. Remember that. You get too nosy, and instead of riding that nag, you're liable to end up jockeying a hearse. Just remember that. I'll get it, Denny. Very well, Bob. Hello? Captain Drummond? Yes? I gotta talk to you. I'm in a jam. Who is this? Russo. My name's Al Russo. I'm jockeying out at the Westwood track. Just what sort of jam are you in, Mr. Russo? I'm riding White Star in the fourth race this afternoon. I'm out at the track now. I'll be going to the post in an hour, and I, I gotta talk to you before the race. Can you make it out here fast? You still haven't told me what this is all about. Well, you gotta come. I'll meet you in front of the grandstand, Section C. You got that section C. Mr. Russo, I hadn't planned to spend the afternoon out at the track, so if you expect me to alter my schedule, you'll have to be a bit more explicit. Just why do you want me to meet you? Well, look, I can't talk here. I think they spotted me coming into this booth. They? Who are they? The ones who are going to kill me. What? That's right, Captain Drummond. I've got to get protection. I can't go to the cops. You can save me if I talk to you before White Star goes to the post. I'll be waiting for you where I said. Now get out here as soon as you can. Hello, Mr. Russo. Hello. Hello. Denny? Denny? Yes, sir. What is it, sir? Hurry, bring the car around front. We're going out to the Westwood racetrack. Westwood racetrack? But I thought we There's were There's a going change to... in our plans, Denny. But 
sir, why this sudden and new interest in the horses? It's not the horses. It's my usual and old interest, murder. Now, hurry, get the car. I'll be out in a moment. Well, sir, we've been standing here in front of the grandstand for ten minutes and no sign of your hatted Mr. Russo. You know what, sir? What, Denny? This may be nothing more than some sort of practical joke. Maybe there is no such person as Al Russo. There's an Al Russo, all right. How do you know, sir? I checked the racing page in the newspaper before we came out here. Just as he told me over the phone, he's scheduled to ride White Star in the fourth race. Well, if he's going to show up here, he'd better make it soon. The fourth race will begin in a few moments. Come on, Denny. Where are we going, sir? To the paddock. Russo should be there. Maybe he could... Pardon me. Yes? You're uh, Captain Drummond. Yes, uh, sir. Hadn't we better hurry? It's almost post time. Please, I must talk to you, Captain Drummond. Uh, sorry, miss. Perhaps later. No, Just uh, Al sent me. Al Russo. Yes. Where is he? He couldn't meet you here. Well, where is he? He was afraid to come out into the open. And just who are you? I'm Al's wife, Captain Drummond. He's in trouble. So he said over the phone. Well, he's got to talk to you. He wouldn't tell me what it was, but I know it's something terrible. You will help him, won't you? I'll do everything I can. Thank you. Thank you. Now, where can I speak to your husband, Mrs. Russo? Over there. At that line of telephone booths under the grandstand, he's waiting for you. He's in the third booth. Al said I should wait out here and see if they follow you to him. All right, Mrs. Rousseau. We'll be back to talk to you after I see your husband. Yes, I'll be right here. Come along, Denny. I'm with you, sir. Third booth. Here it is, Denny. What? It's empty, sir. There's no one in there. Yes. But Mrs. Russo said he was waiting here for you. Denny, Mrs. Russo isn't a woman of her word for more reasons than one. What do you mean by that, sir? Look over there, where we were talking to Mrs. Russo. Why, why she's not there. She's disappeared. Exactly. Come on, Denny, hurry. Where to now? The paddock. What do you suppose this is all about? Why did Mrs. Russo tell us her husband was in that telephone booth and then vanish herself? Now, I think that's your answer, Denny. Oh, I say, they're calling the horses to the post of the fourth race. Exactly. And there goes White Star to the starting gate with the others. That's your answer, all right? We were tricked by Mrs. Russo. It was a stall to keep us away from her husband until the race began. Mrs. Gilson Rand, Westwood, bringing you a description of the fourth race. A $7,000 purse handicap. The horses are at the starting gate. Number five lucky boy is acting up a bit at the post. Now they've got him back in line. They're off. A fast, clean start. Trying to tight back as they move down the stretch toward the first turn. Now out in front by a length. It's Lucky Boy, followed by Sunrise. With White Star now moving into third position. And as they round the first turn, it's Lucky Boy still out in front. Now by two lengths over Sunrise. And coming up fast is White Star. Trailing in the pack behind the leaders of Fly by Night. Full time, Holy Star. Peters in first. Yes, sir. This way, Miss Peters. Captain Drummond, I'm Helen Peters. How do you do? I've just learned from the track officials that my jockey, Al Russo, was poisoned. Yes, that's what happened. I've been asked to handle the investigation. I don't know whether you were informed of the matter, but Russo called me earlier this afternoon. Al called you? Yes. But why? He wanted me to help save his life. Miss Peters, what do you know about Al Russo? Nothing except that he was a good jockey, Captain Drummond. I don't understand. Why should anyone want to murder Al? I was about to ask you the same question. As far as I know, he didn't have any enemy. Uh, Miss Peters, uh, according to Russo's wife... His wife? Yes, a young lady about your height, blonde. But I didn't know Al was married. He didn't tell me. Denny, I doubt seriously if the young woman was Russo's wife. While you went for Miss Peters, I checked with the other jockeys here. As far as they knew, Russo was single. 
That mysterious woman was just playing her part in the murder game. Captain Drummond. Yes, Miss Peters. I was with Al in the paddock when he mounted White Star. He seemed perfectly well then. He was at that point. But they said he was poisoned. That's correct. How? No one was near him after he left the paddock for the starting gate. Russo's death was caused by a strong and swift-acting poison. That poison was injected into his system. Injected? Denny, let me have that saddle. Yes, sir. The medical examiner found a puncture on the inside of Russo's right thigh. Here's the saddle, sir. Hold it up a bit, Denny, so Miss Peters can see. Right, sir. Miss Peters, you'll notice this sticking out of the right side of White Star's saddle. A needle. The murder weapon. There's a hypodermic sewed on the inside of the saddle there. The hypodermic contained the poison. Who could have put that into the saddle? I have the slightest idea. Miss Peters, when is White Star scheduled to race again? Next week at Overton Park, I've entered him in the Wilton Handicap. But with Al gone, I've not jockey. Al could handle White Star. He got more out of him than any other rider. Just now, Miss Peters, I'm not concerned with White Star winning. I just want to make sure that he runs at Overton Park next week. It may be our only chance to catch a killer. You got another jockey, Mr. Connors. What you got, Dave? Teddy Lynch. Lynch is a smart kid, Mr. Connors. He knows how to ride to win. He can bring White Star under the wire in a Wilson handicap next week. What about Drummond? Well, he and that stooge of his are hanging around the stable all the time. This is the first chance I got to come over here. What are you going to do about Lynch? You won't be able to get to him with Drummond around. I'm not getting to Lynch. You mean you're going to let White Star come in for a win? Not on your life. Told you I was holding that nag from the win until I get the odds up high enough for a big killing. And next week, they won't be anywhere near where I want them. Yeah, Mr. Connors, but how are you going to stop it? When are you taking White Star to Overton Park? Tuesday night. You drive over by Route 6? Yeah. All right. Here's what you do. Ten miles outside of town, there's an intersection. Halsey Corners, it's called. I know the place. Okay. You turn right onto 15A and go along for seven miles. Then you come to a sign that says, The Yokes. It's a farm a little off the main road. The Yokes? Right. I'll meet you there. Everything will be set for the nag. Pulling in reverse, eh, Mr. Connors? What do you think? I got too much invested to let White Star win yet. You got everything straight, Dave? Sure, but what about Drummond? What about him? Maybe he'll take it into his head to follow the truck. <laughs> if he does, it'll be the last following he'll ever do. Don't worry about Drummond. I'll have everything set for him, too. Take it easy, boy. Now, easy, easy. He seems to be a little nervous tonight, Dave. I think White Star kind of misses out, Miss Peters. I don't usually have this trouble loading him on the truck this way, boy. Come on. Easy, now. Good evening, Miss Peters. Oh, Captain Drummond, I thought you and Teddy Lynch went on to Overton. I changed my mind. Denny and I have some work to do. I sent Lynch on ahead. By the way, what do you think of Lynch? Seems to be a fine jockey. I told you he'd work out. We both may get what we want at Overton. You a victory for White Star, and I, Al Russo's murderer. All set, Miss Peters. Well, then you better get started, Dave. Uh, sure thing. Just as soon as I get this ramp up, I'm off. Have you found any trace of that uh, woman who said she was Mrs. Russo? Not a sign of her. But I have an idea she'll show up sooner or later. All right, ready to get underway, Miss Peters. All right, Dave. I'll see you tomorrow morning at Overton. Uh, good night. Good night. I'd drive you back to town, Captain Drummond. Uh, no, thank you very much. Here comes Denny with my car now. All set, sir? Yes, yes, Denny. See you at Overton, Miss Peters. All right, Denny, let's go. Right, sir. Keep on the tail of that truck. Right, sir. Not too close. I don't want him to suspect he's being followed. Well, so far he's sticking to the route, Captain Drummond. Yes, but it's still quite a way to Overton. What makes you think something surprising may happen? In the absence of clues, Denny, I have to fall back on hunches. Well, if you ask me, I think we're out on a wild uh, horse chase, if you pardon the pun. Slow down, Denny. Hmm? He's turning off the road. I say, perhaps you were right about that fellow, Dave, sir. That's not the way to Overton. Step on it, Denny. Get up to that intersection. Right, Now, take that turn fast. 
I don't want to lose track of that truck. Hold on, sir. Here we go. Ah, there he is, up ahead. He's picking up speed. Keep after him. I wonder where he's taking White Star. We should soon find out. That Denny. What is it, sir? Look, look, that car pulling out up ahead. It's coming across at us. Quick, swing off the road before we crash head on. Good. Denny. Denny. Oh, I, I'm all right, sir. It's just my arm. We're certainly lucky. We might have been killed. That apparently was their intention. You mean that wasn't an accident? Not by a long shot. That car was evidently waiting for us to come along. Someone had made preparations in the event the truck carrying White Star was tailed. At any rate, Denny, one of my hunches has been proven correct. No doubt about it, we were on the right track. Yes, but now, unfortunately, sir, we've been derailed. Only temporarily, Denny. Only temporarily. But what about the truck? We've lost it. Oh, I'm sure White Star will turn up at Overton safe and sound. Yes, but what about us? Well, first we get in touch with the local police and arrange for our sudden passing. Sudden passing? What do you mean, sir? We're dead, Denny. Dead? That's the way the newspapers will carry the story. Captain Hugh Drummond and Denny killed in auto crash. How does that sound to you? Frightful. What's the idea? I want our would-be assailants to think they were successful. It will make our work more simple. So, Denny, for the time being, we're dead. Very well, sir. I'm dead. Now, would you mind telling me just what work we corpses are to do? Denny, I'm afraid this is going to confound you even more. Go ahead, sir. But break it to me gently. You've heard the one about the horse of a different color? Continue. Well, Denny, we're setting out to find a horse of the same color. Dear, frankly, sir, it doesn't make one bit of sense. But, sense or no sense, I suppose we ghosts should stick together. All right. We'll try that barn first. Really, Captain Drummond, we're taking quite a gamble sneaking about farms in this fashion. We're liable to run up against a farmer who'll take us for trespassers and greet us with a load of buckshot. I'm afraid we'll just have to chance that. Very well, sir. But how long are we going to keep this prowling up? Until I find what we're looking for. I'm sure it's some place in this area. All right, open that door and we'll see what this barn has to offer. All right, come on. Close the door. Yes, sir. The horse stalls are over there. Let's go. Denny. What is it, sir? That horse in the end stall. Sir. Come on. Why, Captain Drummond, this horse, he has a white marking on his head. The same marking. Yes, as... it's White Star, all right, Denny. Oh, but, but I still don't understand. You said when you checked yesterday morning that White Star had arrived at Overton. So he did. Well, then who is this horse? White Star. Oh, now, really, sir, nothing can be in two different places at the same time. Would you mind telling me what this is all about? All right, Denny, all right. Here's the way I see it. This white star we're looking at is a ringer for the white star at Overton. Ringer? A ringer is a sort of stand-in, a replacement to be used at an arranged time. But why? Well, Denny, in horse racing, there's a very good reason, money. The two white stars are identical, probably, in all factors but one, speed. That's where the money angle is put to work. You remember, we checked on White Star's past record. Yes, it was quite undistinguished. Exactly. No wins. The odds against White Star coming in first are great. Oh, I see, sir. If White Star wins, the one who bets on him will be richly rewarded. That's right, Denny. And the chances are that one of the White Stars stands a very good chance of winning. I say, Captain Drummond, do you suppose Miss Peters knows about this? From the way things look, it doesn't appear so. White Star was sold to her last season by Nick Connors. In the past, Connor's dealings in horse flesh have been on the shady side. Oh, then perhaps Connor's had something to do with Al Russo's murder. It's altogether likely, Denny. But we'll have to prove that by drawing Connor's out. How do you expect to accomplish that, sir? By seeing just how interested he is in the way White Star runs. Denny, we're getting this horse out of here. And then what? You and I are taking him to Overton to make an unauthorized switch in horses. Then we'll wait until tomorrow's race and see if we can encircle the murderers with our ringer. I 
I say, Connors is here, sir. I saw him in a box at the other end of the grandstand. All right, Denny. Now, we'd better remain out of sight until after the race. I, uh, I saw Miss Peter's stable hand, Dave, too. He's wearing a bandage around his head as a result of that blow I delivered to him last night before we switched horses. Must be quite a headache, sir. But nothing, Denny, compared to the headache the state is going to give him when we wind this case up. You know, Captain Drummond, one thing bothers me. What's that? I wonder which of the two is the real white star, the one who ran so badly last season. We'll soon learn that, Denny. Ah, there they go. And as they come around the far turn, it's Seminole, still out the front by two lanes over Rocky Ridge, with Dusty King moving up to take third position of a wind song. Seminole has now extended his lead by three full lanes, and wait, there's White Star coming up fast on the inside. Yes, he's making his bid. White Star was Teddy Lynch up. He passes Dusty King to capture the number three spot, and he's still moving up. White Star, the 20 to 1 shot up there among the leaders, and this around the turn into the home stretch. It's Seminole still in the lead, and, and there goes White Star past Rocky Ridge into second place, and he's still coming up fast. Jockey Teddy Lynch is pushing his mouth, pushing, pushing, and now so it's White Star challenging Seminole, and he's up there. Seminole and White Star, neck and neck. White Star and Seminole. And here they come. And it's White Star, White Star, the winner. Hello, Miss Peters. Nick. Nick, White Star won today. You don't say. I don't know how it happened. I can't figure it out. You can't, huh? I can. Nick, what's the matter? You're a lousy double-crosser. What are you talking about? What am I talking about? You, the dirtiest double-dealing dame on the face of the earth. That's what I'm talking about. Nick, I couldn't help it if White Star won today. He just ran well. White Star doesn't run that well. He hasn't got it in him. The ringer was in there today. What? Don't give me that what business. You were setting yourself up for some quick change and a run out. I got it all figured. Nick, you're wrong. I just I checked didn't... with the farm. The ringer wasn't there. You got him out. You pulled a double switch on me. No, no, honest. We I were going to split it. a nice take, you and me. But you, you couldn't wait. You wanted to make a grab for yourself, just like Al Russo did. What made you think you'd get away with it? What made you think so? You're wrong, Nick. You're wrong. I didn't know. I don't know what you're talking about. I rig up a neat scheme. Nobody knows the connection between you and me. I rig it up neat so we can get out with a clean take. You sit high and dry. I get the dirty work done. I get rid of Russo. Then I put Drummond and that stooge of his out of the way. And all the time, all the time, you're setting me up for a lousy sucker. Nick, believe me, I didn't switch the horses. I had nothing to do Not with it. Not much you didn't. Please, you've got to believe get me. Get over there by the window. What? What are you going to do to me? I got another plan for you and me now. Only this time, it's sure to work. I'm seeing it with personally. You're going out that window. Nick! You're going out that window and smacking that lion face of yours. Stop moving! Nick, please, wait Come on, for me. Get over the window! Nick, for heaven's sake, you said a lick Get the window! Get going, I say! Get over here, Miss Peters! Captain Drummond! Don't move, either one of you. I'm alive. Sorry to disappoint you. Captain Drummond, he. This man was going to kill me. Yes. Denny and I heard him talk about it in the adjoining room. We heard everything you two said. You see, Miss Peters, we followed Nick Connors here. All right, Denny, you may show them the way out. Delighted, sir. Miss Peters, Connors, you and the others in this scheme will be starting off soon in a race run by justice. A race for your lives. And believe me, in a contest like that, there won't be any ringers. I'll be back in a moment to tell you about next week's story. Next week, Denny and I visit a seashore resort to find the carnival owner dead on his own scenic railway. Our investigation leads us from attraction to attraction and from murder to smuggling. I call this story, Death Loops the Loop. Be sure to listen, won't you?
out of the night and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. Come with me to North Beach, one of the finest beaches in the Atlantic, famous for its swimming, sports, and for Wind's Wonderland, a gay, exciting sportland without equal. Anthony Wynn, an old friend of mine from Mayfair, had opened his fun palace on the Sound, a short run out of the city. That evening, a gay crowd had gathered. They'd come for thrills, for laughter. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Wind's Wonderland on the Sound, the greatest playland, the greatest thrill land in the East. Come closer, ladies and gentlemen. See the greatest thrill ride in America, the fastest, raciest, the most daring roller coaster ride in the world. The whirlwind. The tenth part of a dollar, ladies and gentlemen. Ten cents to ride with the wind, to feel the thrill of flying, to live dangerously. Step right up, right this way. All off, end of the ride. All right, mister, this is the end of the line, all off. Hey, mister. Hey, Barker. Barker, come here. Something's the matter with this guy here. Now, what's going on here? Hey, look, mister, you have to get off or pay for another ride. Hey, now, do you hear me? Hey, stand back, please. Don't cry. Hey. What's the matter with him? This man is dead. Hey, move back there. Let me get him off. Now, wait a minute. Some bunch of hoser. It's Mr. Wynn, the owner of the place. Captain Drummond speaking. Oh, Captain Drummond, thank goodness I reached you. This is Isabel Wynn. Do you remember Anthony Wynn's daughter? Anthony Wynn? Why, of course, Miss Wynn. How are you? It's been two years since I've seen you. How's father? Captain Drummond, something terrible has happened. What is it? My father... He's dead. Dead? Yes, they say it was an accident, but I know better. It was murder. Somebody killed my father. Murder? Now, Miss Wynn, uh, tell me as simply as you can what happened. I don't know. I saw father only a half hour ago, and he was fine then. And then they told me that he'd been riding on the roller coaster, and they found him in his seat dead. But what makes you think it's murder? Father didn't just die. I know he didn't. Somebody killed him, Captain Drummond. And you've got to help me. You've got to come out here. Now, Miss Wynn, I'll do whatever I possibly can. Denny and I'll leave immediately. Yes. Tell me, where are you now? At the Wonderland, out at North Beach. All right. Now, please try to steady yourself. Hold tight until we get there. And, Miss Wynn, don't tell anyone you think your father's death is murder. Miss Wynn, are you sure you're all right? Yes, Captain Drummond. I was upset when I spoke to you, but I'm all right now. Really, I am. You're very brave, Miss Wynn, very brave. Well, this is Miller, our Barker, Captain Drummond. He's the man who first found Father. How do you do, Miller? Now, can you tell me exactly what happened? Well, uh, the roller coaster came in at the end of the ride, and uh, I saw someone lying slumped over in his seat. I didn't know it was Mr. Wynn until I went over and picked him up. And there he was, Captain Drummond, dead. How was he lying? Well, like I said, slumped over, his head down on his chest, way over on the right side of the car. What was Mr. Wynn doing on that ride? Well, I guess he was testing it. What do you mean, testing it? Well, he did it every week, just about this time. He'd always take the ride himself to see if the whirlwind was in good condition. He's been doing it for years. Yes, that's right, Captain Drummond. Well, they said he'd never ask a patron to ride on the coaster if he himself wouldn't ride on it. Hmm. But why should this ride have killed him, then? I don't know, Captain. The doctor here said it was his heart. Well, it's true, Father's heart was never good. And recently, he'd taken a turn for the worse. Miller and I finally persuaded him to see a doctor about it. We drove in together yesterday. And the doctor said to avoid overstrain and sudden shock. Miss Wynn, I never saw your father get on a whirlwind. If I had, I'd have stopped him. Yes, I know you would, Miller. Thank you. Well, Miller, you've been very helpful. I think you'd better get back to your work now. The crowd seems a little jittery, upset by the accident. See what you can do to quiet them. All right, I'll do my best, Captain Drummond. If you should need me, I'll uh, be glad to help. Miss Wynn, I, I don't like to ask you this again, but... What makes you think your father was murdered? 
I made him promise me yesterday, after we'd seen the doctor, that he wouldn't go on the whirlwind again. And he said that he'd let Miller test it in the future. Well, Captain Drummond's father didn't go on that ride voluntarily. Hmm. Had your father any enemies here? Enemies? No. Except perhaps Mr. Carlson, but... No, I, I wouldn't say they were enemies. Mr. Carlson? Yes, he's the owner of the large oyster house a few piers down on the sound. You see that neon sign on the yacht out there in the bay? Uh, where? No, no, there. That, that ship anchored just beyond the jetty. Oh, yes, yes, I see. Carlson's oysters are in season. Pretty color that sign makes. That's it. He's a sort of competitor of father's. He runs a resort on the Jersey coast. And he made us an offer to buy out the Wonderland a few days ago, but my father wouldn't sell. They had some words about it, but nothing serious. I see. Did he threaten your father? Oh, no. No, nothing like that. Why, Captain Drummond, you don't think... I don't think anything yet, Miss Wynn. I'm just asking questions. And the next thing I want to know is how to take a ride on the roller coaster. Denny and I are going for a trip on the whirlwind. back there, Denny? Oh, yes, sir. This is quite a ride, sir. Quite a daring ride. You're right. That last dip was very steep. Steep enough, I'd say, to kill a man with a weak heart. You, you mean, sir, you believe Mr. Wynn was really killed? I'm not sure yet. Oh, wait, wait, don't move, Denny. Uh, what's that, sir? Don't move. Now, tell me, where are you sitting? Why, here, sir. Back here on the left side of the seat. That's it, on the left side of the seat. That last dip curves sharply to the right. The speed of the roller coaster would naturally throw us both to the left. Naturally, sir. I purposely sat alone in the front seat, Denny, with you in the seat behind me to see what would happen. Well, I'm sorry to be dull, sir, but I don't see what you're driving at. Miller, the barker, told us that he found Wynn's body slumped over in the front seat... On the right-hand side of the car. That means he couldn't possibly have been on that ride alone. Otherwise, that last dip would have thrown him over to the left the way it did us. Then he wasn't alone, sir, when he took that fatal ride. No. Someone rode alongside of him. Someone who knew he had a weak heart and knew he couldn't stand the shock of that last drop. Someone who forced him on that ride. Then you mean, sir... That Miss Wynn was right. Her father didn't die accidentally. Mr. Wynn was murdered on his own roller coaster. Well, Isabel, you were right. When father was murdered, Mr. Jones. Yes. Someone forced him on that roller coaster, knowing the sharp curves and drops would be too much for his heart. But why? Well, who would want to do that, sir? I don't know yet. Now, Isabel, I want you to tell me what other attractions you have here at Wonderland. Well, we have a shooting gallery here, as you see. Yes. And uh, what's down there? Just past the shooting range, over to the left, you can see the whirl of the lawn. Then there's the carousel across the road. Why, what are you after, Captain Drummond? I don't know yet. I'm just getting an idea. Go on. What all? Except for the whirlwind and the ride in the moonlight. A uh, ride in the moonlight? What's that? Oh, it sounds very romantic, sir. It is. It's a kind of modern old mill built right out into the water. No, a boy and a girl like a boat ride in the moonlight. Well, we fixed up some boats with outboard motors, and the couples take them out on the sound. I'd like to see that ride, Isabel. It's just around the corner here, but I don't think you'll find it very exciting. You can't tell. Well, there it is. Ride in the moonlight. See, the boats leave through that passageway on the right. And they ride under a tunnel for about 50 yards, and then they're out on the sound. The route beyond the tunnel is marked by buoys, and you run along the sound for about a minute, and then back through another tunnel to the stars. Hmm. Very ingenious. It sounds very attractive. It's very popular, too. Isabel, would you care to take a ride in the moonlight with me? Uh, with me and Denny, of course. Why, yes, Captain Drummond, if you think it worthwhile. I do.
Ah, here's a boat, sir. It's called the Rhoda. You see, all the boats have names. A very pretty craft, if I may say so. All right, the Rhoda will do. Oh, excuse me, sir, Miss Wynn, uh, but the Rhoda's out of commission. We got to overhaul her. Why not take this boat, the Marianne? She's in shipshape condition and just as comfortable. Very well. The Mary Ann it is. Uh, give the motor a turn, will you, Danny? Right, sir. Ah, ready, sir. Here we go. I say, sir, it's quite dark in this tunnel. That seems to be the idea, Denny. We'll be out on the sound in just a minute now. You haven't noticed anything yet, have you? I mean, anything out of the ordinary? No, everything seems to be in order. <gasps> What's that? Well, the motor, sir. I, I think it backfired. That wasn't backfired, Denny. That was a gunshot. Keep low, Isabel. Someone's watching us. Someone's anxious to keep us from learning something. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment to continue my story. Denny and I discovered that Anthony Wynne, an old friend of mine, was murdered. His accidental death due to heart failure was no accident, but a coldly planned killing. And in our search for the killer, Denny and I were in one of the little ride in the moonlight boats with Isabel, Anthony's daughter. In the darkness of the tunnel, a shot is out. Keep low, Isabel. Someone's watching us. Someone's anxious to keep us from learning something. Denny, can you speed up that motor? I'll try, sir. No, I can't. It, it's set at a fixed speed. All right, we'll just have to hug the bottom, then. Keep down, both of you. Hold on. What's that? What, sir? The Carlson sign on his yacht there. The Oysters R and Seaton sign. See it? Yes. It's flashing off and on. I never saw that before. Six. Seven. Eight, nine, ten, ten flashes. What do you make of it, sir? Denny, what time is it? Oh, well, it's, it's hard to make out of this light, sir. It, oh, it's just 15 minutes before 10 o'clock, sir. 10 o'clock, that's it. I think I've got it. We're going to have to work faster than I thought. What do you mean, Captain Robin? We've got to get back to shore. Denny and I are going to Carlson's Oyster Bar. We're going to investigate some oysters on the half shell. Let's move over to the oyster bar, Denny. Is it ten yet? Almost, sir. It's about three minutes before the hour. Keep your eyes open. For what, sir? Anything unusual? Denny. Yes, sir? That man there at the oyster bar. The one taking the box of oysters, sir? Yes. Yes, I heard him order a dozen oysters to take out. Let's move over and I'll stumble against him. I'll try to knock the package out of his hand. See if you can get one of those oysters. I'll try, sir. Excuse me, sir. Could you spare me a match? I... Oh, I'm... You clumsy fool! Oh, I say, I'm dreadfully sorry. Really, I am here. Let me help you pick them up. Get away from here. Get away, you stumbling idiot. Leave those oysters alone. Don't you touch them. I'll kill you. I don't want your help. Get out of my way, you fool. You bundly fool. Good work, Denny. Yeah, what a offended temper. There's something the matter with that man. Did you get one? D did you see that man, sir? He turned purple with rage. I never saw anything like it in my life, sir. Yes, yes, I saw him, Denny. And I think I know why. You did get one of the oysters, didn't you? Oh, yes, I did, sir. And most amazing, sir, these oysters aren't open. I never heard of anyone ordering unopened oysters before, did you, sir? Not unless they aren't to be eaten. What do you mean, Captain Drummond? I'll know in a moment. Give me that oyster, Denny. Uh, no, no, not here. Go over to the corner. I want to open it. Open it, sir? Give me a knife. Thank you. There, that does it. Well, that isn't an oyster, sir. No, Denny. There's a small white package in between these oyster shells. What do you make of it, sir? Come on, I'll tell you as we go. We haven't a moment to waste. We're going for another ride on the Mary Ann. Another exciting ride in the moonlight. Well, what about that oyster, sir? Dope, Denny. Dope, sir? Yes. The oyster house is merely a blind for dope peddling. 
They take oysters, open them slightly, remove the meat, put in the drug, and close the shelf again. I thought it was hard for a man to come up to the oyster bar and order a dozen oysters in season to take out. One doesn't ask for oysters in season, unless one means something besides oysters. Oh, I see, sir. And that man I encountered, he must have been a purchaser. That's why he was so furious when I bumped into him. That man was an addict. You notice his face? Horrible tenseness of his eyes and the stiffness of his body? Yes, I did. He seemed almost ready to kill me, sir. And he might have. If he'd seen you take an oyster. Such men are desperate, and they'll stand for no interference. Denny, it was this that Mr. Wynne discovered before he was killed. You mean they found out that Mr. Wynne knew of their traffic in the foul drug, eh, sir? Exactly. And Carlson, knowing Mr. Wynne had a weak heart, forced him to ride on the whirlwind, thereby murdering him. Yes, but how could Carlson know that, sir? Miller the Barker. You remember he drove Miss Wynne and her father in to see the doctor yesterday? The Miller's mixed in it, too. I I say, Captain Drummond, where are you taking the boat? You're not following the boys. You're going out further into the sound. We're taking a detour, Denny. We're going to visit Carlson's yacht. I suspect it's much more than an advertisement for the Oyster House and much more than a yacht. <laughs> All right, Denny, shut off the motor. We'll glide in. I don't want to broadcast our approach. Right, sir. Look, Denny, that boat there. Why, it's the rotor, sir. But the staff have told us it was out of working order. Yes, out of working order for us. But an important part in Carlson's plan. What do you mean, sir? Never mind right now. Let's get up these steps and aboard. Walk quietly, Denny. There's no need to be what? quiet, Captain what? Drummond. We've been expecting you. Carlson. Yes, Captain Drummond, Carlson. I'm flattered you should know me without an introduction. Oyster house owner, yachtman, and as you have so ably demonstrated, smuggler. But right now, on the business end of a gun. Get up here, quick. Bothery. Very clever, Carlson. Now, back over there to that door. We uh, couldn't understand why you took so long in getting here. Perhaps the Marianne was too slow. You should have tried the Rhoda. She's much faster, as your charming friend Miss Wynne can tell you. Miss Wynne? Is she... Yes. I took the precaution of inviting Miss Wynne to my yacht. We will say that uh, she is my guest. She occupies the cabin here. Not a very willing guest, I might add, but nevertheless a guest. I warn you, Carlson, if you harm Miss Wynne... Now, Wynn... look, Drummond, I give the orders here. Now, open that door. Down those steps and be quick about it. Pull open that door and get inside. Now, this is the anchor room, Drummond. The room in which the anchor chain piled when we lift anchor. You see the windlass there and the chain attached. I'm uh, sorry it's not very comfortable. And when we hoist anchor, you may find it a bit overcrowded. But uh, <laughs> you won't mind it for long. We uh, take off at uh, five past eleven. Just about to pull anchor. You know this is murder, don't you, Carlson? First win and now us. Win? Murder? Oh, well, that was heart failure, Drum. Heart failure. You heard the doctor's report. And as for you, I didn't know you'd stowed away on my boat. And I never thought you'd hide in the anchor chain room. Your uh, accidental death will come as a shock to me, Captain Trump. A great blow. Well, I see we're hoisting anchor. Well, goodbye, uh, Captain Drummond. The door, Denny. Let's see if we can move it. No, it's no use. It's two inches of steel. I say, the, the chain is beginning to fill up the room, sir. We've got to stop it. We've got to find something to keep that chain from piling in here. Quick, Denny, come around here. Give me a hand with this pipe. Coming, sir. It's one chance in 10,000, Denny, but we've got to take it. This steam pipe here may provide the power for hoisting the anchor. There must be a steam winch somewhere here, and I think this pipe is it. No, oh, sir. Watch it, Denny. That pipe contains live steam. Here, here, take this rag. Wrap it around your hands and pull this way toward me when I say so. Right, sir. I'm ready. All right, then. Pull. Yeah. 
Here is mending. Now, once more, together. Pull. Watch out, Jenny. That live steam has fallen. You keep behind it. Ah, I say you've done it, sir. The anchor stopped moving. Hand me that splintered oar, will you, Jenny? Yes, yeah, sir. Now, if I can force this piece of rag into the pipe with a stick, I'll be able to plug up that steam. Give me a hand, Denny, but watch out for the steam. Good. Now, help me bend this pipe in the direction of the door. They'll be down in a minute to find out what's wrong, and we'll be able to greet them properly. That's got it. Now, stand back, Denny. What's going on in there? Come on, get out of there, both of you. Miller, here's something you didn't expect. Oh! That's done it, Denny. The force of that steam was like a blow in the head. Miller's out. Get his gun. Right, sir. Now, help me plug up this pipe. We've got to get on deck. Denny. The sooner we get up on deck, the quicker we'll get to Carson. All right, Drummond. Your little escape is over. Drop that gun. Uh, very clever stopping that anchor. Now, get over there, both of you. Back up against that cabin. It looks as if my anchor method was a little too subtle for you. I gotta use the crudest method of all to get rid of you. A bullet through your head. You'll never get away with this, Carson. I saved the talk. Now, who wants it first? You, Drummond, or you? Good work, Miss Wynn. Get those guns, Denny. I've got them, sir. Now, up with your hands, Carlson. Up with them, I say. Why, are you... Lord? Never mind that, Carlson. Get over here. Denny, give me one of those guns. Who hit me? I did. You were so sure of yourself, Carlson, you never saw Miss Wynn lean out of the cabin porthole. Denny, go unlock that door and let Miss Wynn out. Right, sir. If I may say so, sir, it's a great privilege to unlock the door for the guardian angel. Are you all right, Isabel? Yes, I'm fine. Good. Denny, go down in the hole and pick up Miller. He'll be coming too just about now. Right, sir. Oh, and Denny. Yes, sir. I want to get Carlson and Miss Wynne back to shore. We'll take the Mary Ann. The rotor's still tied on at the landing steps. Bring Miller up and take him back with you in the rotor. Keep an eye on him, Denny. Keep a finger on your trigger. I'll take good care of him, sir. See you later. Have a pleasant ride, Mr. Carlson. Captain Drummond, did this man kill my father? Yes, he and Miller. They did it together. Your father found out that Carlson was running more than an oyster house. That's why Carlson tried to buy him out. And then when father wouldn't sell, he forced him on the roller coaster. But why? Because he was smuggling dope. That would be... Yes. He brought the drugs into the sound on his yacht and used the ride your father was operating as a blind for his smuggling. He landed his stuff on shore through the ride in the moonlight. The ride in the moonlight? Yes. One of his men, and perhaps a woman, to make it look like two people enjoying the ride, would buy a ticket, run the boat out through the tunnel into the sound, and then they'd steer out to the yacht where the packages would be picked up. I see and in those packages? Oysters. Oysters? Mm-hmm. Oysters packed with a drug. In case they were discovered in the process, those packages were very proper. Just a box of oysters bought at Carlson's Oyster Bar. How did you find out about the ride in the moonlight? Well, when we took our first ride, you remember the attendant said not to take the rotor, that she was out of order? Yes, I do remember. Well, I ran my hand across the motor. It was still hot. The boat was in good shape. And as I judged from the make of the motor, faster than the other boats. And then there was oil on the front of the boat. Oil? Yes, Carlson, oil. When we took that first ride, Isabel, and stayed in the lanes marked for the ride, our boat didn't pick up any oil. But the rotor had oil in her bow. Now, oil on the sound can mean only one thing, a vessel. Carlson's yacht is the only vessel within half a mile. That was the last piece to the puzzle. Uh, the last piece but one. What do you mean, the last but one? The last question was how to get off Carlson's yacht with him pointing a gun at me. And you answered that one, Isabel. With my good right hand. Yeah. 
when we've deposited our murderer here and Denny comes in with Miller, the ride in the moonlight will be restricted to couples interested exclusively in the movie. I'll be back in just a moment to tell you about next week's story. Next week, Denny and I encounter an ex-convict with but one thing on his mind, revenge. Our story involves the brutal slaying of three people, all involved as murder gets out on bail. Be sure to listen, won't you? Mm-hmm.